Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. Now, when was the last time you guys used Gold Diet Arm Cover? Like seriously, when was the last time you guys picked it up, equipped it, and used it in any activity? Because honestly, I can't remember either. But that's generally fine, as today we'll be bringing back a classical exotic once more, which is Skull Diet Arm Kara and Bad Juju. The build we have will allow us to spam our super in a short amount of time, while also showing you a cool arc setup that works well with the chaos being done. And I'm going to show you how to excel well with this build overall. So start with the general aim and let's sort of got the build. Our aim is to showcase the update exotic in action and how to maximize their secondary effects on the go. For this, we will be using Skull Dire Arm Kara and Bad Juju. A start with our exotic armor, Skull or Dire Arm Kara, with exotic effect, actual grandeur, it states, provide additional damage resistance during Nova Bomb. A Nova Bomb final blows and weapon final blows while you have Devour grants super energy. A skull has now been updated to be more flexible and feel compared to before. With the added additional Devour providing extra super energy on kills, this pairs well with Bad Juju in his stacking buffs while also providing super energy as well. As such a small but simple update can bring back a wide number of exotics that have simply been left behind as they cannot stack with the current trends. The buff that Devour gives can range from a 1% to 4.5% super energy return depending on target type defeated. So keep this in mind when facing multiple enemies at once just so you know where you're at. Our second exotic is Bad Juju with its exotic effect String of Curses which states Kill refill the magazine, increase damage for a short duration, and grant super energy based on the strength of String of Curses, fires full auto. A Bad Juju has now become one of the best exotic pulses to use for everything it offers to the players. You have a stacking damage buff, auto reload per kill, super energy return from kills, and now Dragonfly. Like tell me, which other weapon has this many buffs going for it? This alone makes it suitable to be paired up with Skull Dire Arm Cover, since the two both have super energy recovery in place. Now once we also add on mods and aspects as well, the build becomes more powerful before its final conclusion. For aspects and fragments we have the following. A feed of void where defeating a target with an ability will grant you devour. Helion, where adding your class ability, summons a seal of mortar that lobs flaming projectiles at targets which scorches them. A fast or grace, where defeating targets with kinetic weapons grants you bonus transcendence energy. Defeating targets with your super grant you and allies bonus transcendence energy. A fast of hope, where while having an elemental buff, your class ability regenerates faster. A fast of dominance, where having a void grenade weakens targets. Arc grenades jolt targets. A facet of balance where rapidly defeating targets with light abilities grants mini energy. Rapidly defeating targets with dark abilities grants grenade energy. And facet of solitude where landing rapid precision hits emits a seven blast that weaken targets damage. As bad juju and score die on car are two exotics that don't need much investment, your aspects and fragments will offer you room to expand and experiment however you like in this case. For me, I decided to lean into the jolting aspects my build will have using Facile Dominance and Trace Evident Seasonal Mod. Trace Evident upon activation will be giving me iron traces for targets inflicted by Jolt, which my two weapons and grenades will be offering. This in turn will also allow me to become Amplified, which will also affect Facile of Hope overall effectiveness and allow Helion to last longer. After this, a Feed the Void Devour effect will trigger Skull Dire Arm Kara Super Regen effect will also allow me to get my grenades back up fast as well. And then lastly, a Facet of Grace and Solitude will work in tandem with each other by offering a buff for me and a debuff to those affected by it. This is just a prime example of a style you can also go ahead and aim for, but you could also go with Stasis instead. But this ultimately is down to you. For the mods and stats, we have both resilience and discipline marked with the highest priority of the build. Intellect is not required or focus. Resilience, we have R at tier 10 for 30% damage reduction. We have added the Concussive Dantner mod for the reduced AoE splash damage done to us, and mainly because grenade launchers will be heavily used this season, so we do need to reduce the splash damage as much as possible. A discipline, we have R at tier 10 for 1 minute 1 second cooldown via storm grenades. Any grenade is fine to run with the build, since our two exotics can work in any setup you have in mind. 
For me, I chose Ark as we have a few seasonal mods that provide Ark buffs to ourselves. So I decided to lean heavily into the Jolten aspects of the build, and as shown in gameplay, has actually worked out really well, especially if we're getting our grenades back rapidly. Since cooldown isn't a huge issue here, you can invest into other areas as shown. Impact induction for a 12% grenade buff, momentum transfer for a 12% melee buff, outreach for a 12% melee buff, and distribution for a 4% all ability buff will cover the key areas of the build. And now for the additional mods, we then have the following. Heavy Ammo Finder, Reserves and Scavenger mods for a heavy weapon. Connect Siphon for creating orbs of power via Connect weapons. Charged up times 1 for increasing the maximum stack of armor charges by plus 1. Connect Weapon Surge times 1 for a 10% Connect Weapon buff. And a powerful attraction for automatically connecting orbs of power when using our class ability. Now for the weaponry, as we have covered our exotic primary weapon, I would then advise you to pick some super weapons for the build. What I recommend are all optional, so please keep this in mind. Our secondary is the Dead Gremia shotgun with Eddie Current and Volt Shot. The following weapon pairs well with the build, since shotguns have now been buffed, and the two perk combos work out really well for what we are running with. I decided that pairing this up with Trace Evidence Seasonal Mod will grant us Ionic Trace's per jolt kill we get. Since our abilities can trigger jolt as well, this will pay off well for us since it will also grant Amplified and Ability Energy. Any weapon that can trigger jolt is fine to run with this setup, since the weapon and roll combo isn't easy to get, so at least you can try something else instead. For Heavy, we then have the Bittersweet Grenade Launcher with Loose Change and Jordan Feedback. This was one of my first weapon rolls to drop from this season, and it's quite obvious as to why it's quite a good pairing. A free reload speed buff, movement buff, and being able to apply Jolt on a single target makes weapons feedback perform exceptionally well in all situations it's in. With Trace Evidence applied, we can then add on the extra ability energy gain from this and more, so overall, it does what's intended. As shocking as it is to hear about the return of two exotics that the community and Bungie have overlooked for years, it's actually appreciative to actually see the two exotics with strong affiliations to each other to actually become viable again. A bad Juju has had quite a few updates over time, so it wasn't too bad to use, but the update explosion it now gets makes it more better for procking a string of curses more often. The Skull of Dire Arm Car, on the other hand, needed the buff that would prolong its exotic effect in or out of action. Now, with the recent update, the exotic is not only in a better place now, but its changes are quite noticeable, as seen in the gameplay. This is the most basic and easiest build that any player can get their hands on, which is now rewarding for simple gunplay. The Skull of Dire Arm Car will grant us up to about 5% super energy per kill made with it, with Devourer providing even more on top of what we already have. A bad Juju string of curses not only buffs this weapon, but it will also provide additional super energy when also netting kills. All of this in one is going to allow you to get your super back in under a minute, depending on our situation on the hand. Also to highlight, we'll make a full use of these seasonal mods within our build to enhance our kit's strength. As shown, having lightning grenades with fast out dominance and solitude will stack a debuff onto any targets we are afflicted by it. That will also weaken and apply additional damage over time. Combine this with an arc grenade launcher that can apply jolt, and then apply rapid impacts, trace evidence, and concussive reload, and you get a build that has two things going for it, but overall makes a deadly impact in the end. My final thoughts are that the newly updated exotics have left quite an impression on me, considering how rare and sometimes hard it is to use the following in tandem. I welcome the changes, as these have been exciting to finally play with again, and I can't wait to go ahead and try out some other build ideas I've had in mind, but I just never had the opportunity to really give it a try. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. While if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos, then leave a like and a sub while you're here. A dim link for the build is located below in the pinned section, and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.